welcome to Canadian Politics is Boring! Shall I do the intro? I do yeah, the intro? do it, but do this one like, do this one like uh, a game show host. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Canadian Politics is Boring, the show where Jesse has to get things right or he gets dropped into a large tank of gunk. Um, <laughs> how's that sound? Is that, that was, like a game show? That was that was pretty good. I think you could do a little better. Try like I don't want I don't want to pretend pretend you just did like uh you know a line of sugar and a and a shot of caffeine. I'm Did you say a line of sugar because your mother listens to this and you don't want her to know that you know cocaine exists? <laughs> <laughs> Shush. I don't know what that word means. Try it again. Okay. More loud, more exciting, um, more exuberant. I don't want to. My kids are asleep upstairs. Oh, I'd rather okay. not. Fine. Well, do the opposite. We just, do, do like a super depressed intro. That is, they, they usually are. <laughs> There's no, a normal one. Anyway, should we just get on with the show? <laughs> Let's just get on with the fucking show. Let's do it. What do you got for us today, Reese? What's going on? Oh, you're going to love this. This one is... Um, Am I? Okay. Uh, and I'm being ironic. It's, it's horrible. Um, <laughs> so, have you ever heard of Canada's race tax? <laughs> no. I guess that snort was because it just sounds so horrible. <laughs> it is. So, to be more specific... It was the Chinese head tax. Did you ever know that that thing existed? I, I, no. What does that even? So, so essentially, like headhunters? Like, so if you were Chinese, if you wanted to come to Canada from China, it meant that you had to pay uh, a fee to, to enter the country. Whereas if you were from Europe, you paid, you'd either paid no fee or a much smaller fee. And it was the idea was they were trying to limit the amount of people moving from China to Canada. Um, just to maintain European immigration. Wow. And I, I, I can go to the detail if you'd like. Sure, why not? That's, it was, that's um, depressing. Yeah. So yeah, give me details. Do, an, old, yeah, an old friend of the show does appear in this episode, so um, I, want you to give, I want you to give a loud cheer when you hear his name. So, um, <laughs> so through the mid to late 19th century, 17,000 labourers were brought from China to do construction on the Canadian Pacific Railway. Right. And they were only paid a third or less than half um, the wage of their co-workers of European descent. So yeah, about a dollar horrible. a day. A lot of them and, were also tasked with uh, bringing in nitroglycerin into the uh, the mountains <clears throat> when they were trying to build tunnels for the, the railway through, which was, again, horrible. Yeah. It's some um, lovely topics for a comedic podcast. Keep going. There's one, you know, is, um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so Chinese, <laughs> yeah. Chinese immigration, um, was seen as a problem by the British Columbian government, uh, provincial government. And they wanted to prevent, uh, Chinese immigration in 1878. However, this was struck down by the federal government. So, um, friend of the show, Prime Minister John A. Macdonald. I'm saying Ooh, that ironically. Yay! Boo! Um, <laughs> uh, he acknowledged the necessity of Chinese labor to build the the railways. So he struck down this ban to stop them from um, uh, from from banning Chinese people. So, oh wow! Uh, he said, either you must have this labor or you can't have the railway. And obviously, it was very important at the time to have the railway. Um, and he uh, he essentially kind of defended the right for people to to come in. But do do you think he's a hero in this story? I'm, I'm this guessing question. not. So <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say no is the is the final answer. So Alex he he Trebek. demanded he demanded Chinese immigration was maintained in order to keep building the railroads. But what do you think he did once they'd finished building them? No, he didn't ship them back. Well, they, they didn't ship them back, but they stopped more of them coming. <laughs> So they, um, they they restricted it. So the federal government in 1885 passed the Chinese Immigration Act, which um, stipulated that all the Chinese entering Canada had to pay a $50 fee, uh, which was referred to as the head tax. Wow, that's so a lot back then. Yeah. So um, bear in mind, the average Chinese laborer earned $300 a year, just oh like a God. large chunk of their... So it meant that it really limited the amount of people. And even if you lived a frugal life, apparently you could only save $43 a year um, if you were really extra specially careful with your money. Um, Jesus. So basically it kind of, it, the idea was to just 
stop people from coming in it, without without banning them. It just made it uh, very hard for people to get into the country. And this was amended in 1887, 1892, and 1901. And the fee was eventually increased to $500 in 1903, which is the equivalent of two years' salary. Or you could at least you could buy two houses with that kind of money in those days. Wow. Oh, um, my God. So the Canadian government, people still wanted to come here. So um, the Canadian Why? government... <laughs> you know, it's like, just, it was such a warm welcome, you know. <laughs> so the Canadian government had collected about $23 million or $333 million in kind of the equivalent money of today. Oh, my um, God. From 81,000 uh, Chinese people who, who moved uh, to Canada. But also, not only did they have to pay that fee, they were then denied the right to vote. They were denied the right to the practice law or medicine or to hold public office, to seek employment on public works, to own land. Um, and they faced daily prejudice and discrimination when they did arrive. I can see why 81,000 people would flock here. Jesus. I know. Well, exactly. It's like a land of milk and honey. Right. So, um, <laughs> And in, in, in 1921, they then changed the rules. So if you left Canada for more than two years, um, you would have to pay the tax when you came back as well. Oh, my God. <laughs> so what it, it had a really weird effect on Chinese immigration. So what you find is because you had to pay that money, families didn't come to Canada. Men would come on their own and send the money back to their families because it was obviously so expensive to, to come over. Right. So you ended up with this bachelor society. So the ratio of Chinese men to women in Canada was 28 to 1. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Uh, which is like obviously an insane gender imbalance. But um, despite anti-Chinese immigration laws and rampant discrimination and everything else that I've just mentioned, <laughs> <laughs> um, the Chinese population in Canada increased from 4,383 to 39,587 between 1881 and 1921. It makes you wonder what... Like, why were why were they were they escaping? I think I think it was like if I think a lot of it was was poverty. Um, so if you didn't have anything to lose, like you, you know, you can you can always assume that it's going to be better if there's if there's work there. Then even if it's work under such horrible circumstances, it's still work. I suppose. God, this is going to be another one of these depressing episodes, isn't it? <laughs> so, yeah. um, so yeah, I mean, it was pretty pretty racist yeah um, i think I you think know how much agree. i love talking about racism i know it's um it's a um it always seems to come up in conversation <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway um so then eventually um despite you know all the efforts to make it as hard as possible but people still arriving looking for a better life damn them who do they think they are <laughs> right. they wouldn't catch me moving to a new country <laughs> again yeah again yeah. <laughs> after this experience in canada yeah. exactly. <laughs> um they actually just banned all chinese immigration in 1923 really what yeah That's um, not, what happened then until and this is from 1923 to 1947 Oh it's my called God. the Chinese. The Chinese. They called it the Chinese Immigration Act, but they now call it the Chinese Exclusion Act, which is because it's not really an immigration act if you stop all immigration. Right. Yeah. No, that doesn't make yeah. any sense. So, yeah. Yeah. Um. And 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 just to like show you, like when when all these when they had all these crazy rules in the uh, ships were only permitted one Chinese passenger for every fifty tons of the ship's total weight, um, compared to one person per two tons for ships carrying Europeans. So you can like see how, uh, and that's not because Chinese people are bigger. Um, it's <laughs> been like 25 times the size of Europeans. It's just racism. Well, like, I can totally understand why they'd want to like <laughs> held back it's on the massive, massive Asian giants times. that are trying to come into this country. Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, one at a time. Yeah, you've got that mountain. You can have that mountain. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I mean, Canada's a big country. Even if there were thousands of giants coming here, we'd still be fine. <laughs> we'd be fine. That's fine. There's plenty of, there's room for, yeah. there's loads of room. It's fine. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so that uh, Immigration Act was repealed in 1947. Things moved on, but there were still a lot of people who'd, whose um, 
relatives and uh, kind of a family had come and paid a ridiculous amount of money for their right to live in Canada. Whereas obviously their neighbor whose grandparents came from or parents came from Europe hadn't faced that kind of um, discrimination. And the Canadian government, had, you know, got a lot of money from, from charging this. So um, in 1983, two elderly um, former Chinese immigrants who had been he- head tax payers um, started a campaign for action and they wanted a refund. This is in 1983? The, 1983. They, they, Because they, everyone kind of forgot about it. People conveniently forgot about how horrible they were being. <laughs> um, and they asked for a refund of their $500 head tax payments that they oh, wow. paid. And they were denied in 1983. So, um, and then again in 2004. Well, then they probably um, did the math that they'd have to pay everybody. But, I mean, that still doesn't mean they shouldn't pay them back. No, they they should pay them back. I just don't think they were feasibly, like, feasibly able to pay them back. Again, yeah, with inflation, it's like, okay, we owe you. Probably be like t- tens of thousands, maybe, I guess. The United Nations, uh, they, they said, they recommended that Canada did redress the head tax. In 2016, everyone's favorite prime minister, Stephen Harper. Is he your favorite? Oh, God. So that's, I get chills up my spine when that Stevie band Harps. Just, <laughs> I think that was Stevie the name Harps. of his band. <laughs> Stevie Harps and the Marionettes. Steve, Stephen and the Harpers. Yeah, that's. I know, I know you've yeah. mentioned him as your favorite prime minister. He's so a horrifying man. Another friend of the show, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another ironic friend of the show. Um, so he actually, they, he apologized to head taxpayers and their families, the first prime minister to do so, um, and the Chinese Canadian community. And he pledged symbolic payments to live in head taxpayers and live in spouses of deceased payers. Um, and a commitment was made to establish funds to help finance community projects aimed at acknowledging the impact of past wartime measures and immigration restrictions on the Chinese com- Canadian community and other uh, ethnocultural communities, which doesn't sound like something he'd ever say, but he did. I don't believe he did say that. That's a lot. That's a lot of words. And the man did not speak English very well. So I'm going to say that. I that think someone wrote it down and he, he, he kind of mouthed the words. Like he just kinda, it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the real question you got to ask yourself is that's what he said, but what do you think happened? Ooh, do you know? Do you have so, secret underground information? I, I remember I said like something like tens and tens of thousands of people, people have moved in. Can you guess how many received money back? I'm going to say none. Or three. Uh, just to put few, a weird number than, out there. Fewer than 50. Oh, wow. Um, uh, received payments of $20,000 from the federal government. Um, and many descendants are still uh, also chasing for the money, um, but they were excluded um, from the settlements uh, that were set up in 2006. So wow. f- 50 people got some money back that was comparable to what they had to pay to come to the country. Um, and um, yeah, so that's the story of the Chinese head tax. And You Stephen do Harper find the most... Saving the day. Just <laughs> <laughs> Chocolate raisins, butter pecan pie, a warm breeze on a sunny day, mid-podcast special announcements. These are all of our favorite things, and I'm sure you'll agree. Hey, here comes one now. You do find, I mean, it's educational for our comedy podcast. That's very funny. <laughs> I kind of think, it, I think it's an important story, though. Cause of like, course it's important. This I is mean, a comedy show, Reese. <laughs> There's all kinds of important things we could be talking about. Tons. <laughs> There's a never-ending supply of important right, things. What, what would you like? What would you like me to do? Would you like me to next time we record? Would you just like me to find zany topics? Honestly, I think okay. I think I I had a, a pro. I, I made the mistake of complaining that there were too many drunk, crazy people talked about on our show. Bring back the drunk, crazy people. I think that's. <laughs> Are you just depressed now? That, that I am. Yes, racism. this is awful. I'm gonna go. Well, I'm probably gonna go barbecue something, but I'm gonna do it. Sadly, that's there's gonna be tears on my steak. Are you saying you don't like you don't like to be um, educated about racism? 
Is that what you're trying to say? That's exactly what I'm trying to say. I want to be as, as <laughs> you want to be ig- ignorant. ignorant as humanly possible. Yeah, that's. <laughs> <laughs> well, Thank Jesse. you for finding those words. I couldn't find them yeah, myself yeah, yeah, because yeah. I, think I you're am so to ignorant. Say you, yeah. <laughs> you're just trying to. Say, what you want to do is just be shielded from the harsh realities that others face that you don't. You you have the luxury to ignore. That's what you want. What are you trying to do to me, man? <laughs> Enough people don't like me as it is, man. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> if you had to tax anyone to come into Canada, and this isn't based. And this isn't based on race. This might just be on on fashion sense. Who yeah, would you charge? I, well, the, uh, the unfashionable, obviously. That's yeah, yeah. The unfashionable. <laughs> <laughs> A subjective tax on bad hipsters bad. and hippies. That's it. I'd be done. Yeah. <laughs> I would. I I have a very. Do your well glasses have food. lenses in them? No tax. That's you know yeah. Do you use patchouli as a perfume or a moisturizer? Tax. Do you like this is yeah, it's easy. I can make this list. I, I have a, a really strict immigration uh, policy on those really aggressive Canadian geese. So when they all <laughs> when they all leave That's all in the win- geese in Canada, Reese. When, when they when they leave, we close the borders to them and we <laughs> Because and then they just can't come back. I mean, they're really beautiful to look at, but they they're dangerously aggressive. I do saw one. Do, do you want to do an episode saw, called "Canadian Geese Are Assholes"? Well, I, think that would I be saw very one attack one. a BMW. <laughs> Did it win? Well, the thing is that the person in the BMW, they they the goose was like crossing the road with some babies, and the BMW had stopped and was just enjoying the the spectacle of Mother Nature's beauty, and <laughs> um, the the goose you know, leading his family across. But the goose was like, it got this baby safe across. And then it was like, right, now I'm going to get this BMW for <laughs> enjoying my existence. And I've never seen somebody sat in what is essentially armor made of toughened glass and steel and aluminum um, or aluminum, as you call it, um, <laughs> look so scared by a goose, <laughs> even though nothing could go wrong. Like... <laughs> <laughs> the goose wasn't going to open the doors and get in there with them, but they looked terrified. And and then I think I of- think the geese have sort of like a hypnotic, like fear-inducing power because people are terrified of geese. And you're right, they shouldn't be. If it was like a death match between John and a goose, like it's, I'm, <laughs> I think my money would be on John. Just saying, just throwing you know, like. Well, but people I, are I, terrified I think, of geese. They just you know. I think I tell you what it is 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 you know if someone says you. Somebody was killed by a bear. You go, well, bears are dangerous. You know, they're large. They've got teeth. Um, I don't think I'd ever have to sit down and explain to myself why a bear was able to kill a human. I like it just like. (laughs) It's instinctively terrifying. But I think that the thing that's scary about a goose is that the fear of knowing that if you're the person in the news who got killed by a goose, (laughs) that that's that's worse than death itself in a way. Um, Just to be (laughs) branded as the goose victim for life. And then or the, or the guy what, who had to kill a goose because the goose wouldn't see, leave you alone. Or you'd be like in a restaurant, see that guy over there? Lost his brother to a goose. <laughs> that's how you've always been known. <laughs> if I have to go, man. His family that's, would have to live with that shame. So, <laughs> so I'm I'm going to get the help of Johnny McDonald's ghost to, because right. um, we don't need the goose to the geese to build a any kind of infrastructure project so we could just stop them coming back just a net a net over just Canada. a net just yeah. a, a net through the whole sky yeah so. it's easy <laughs> exactly so i think that's a sensible immigration policy um, we'll tax the geese take we'll that money geese. wait for the geese to leave then with that money build the net yeah or yeah. just ta- tax them to leave in a way that they can't afford to and then they freeze in the winter that's that's again. You you know how to get really dark real quick, don't you? That's well. <laughs> well if ever barbecue ever barbecued a goose? <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> Actually, go- I've eaten goose. It's quite nice. Oh, I may imagine it's, it tastes like chicken, right? It's- no, it's um, <laughs> like a big duck. <laughs> <laughs> what does duck taste like, Reese? Uh, it's like. Chicken, chicken. <laughs> but it tastes. No, it's not. It's a different texture. It's a different texture. Um, it's kind of. It's kind of like um, slightly greasier than chicken. Mm, greasy chicken. It's just fri- okay. Fried chicken. Fried, okay. <laughs> it's just fried chicken. <laughs> have you ever tried? Have you ever been attacked by an animal? I have. Yes. What? What animal? 
Uh, it was more than one. Uh, I was what attacked. Animals? I was attacked by a cat, uh, <laughs> a house cat. Oh man, that was terrifying. No, I was. I he, it shredded me. I was bleeding profusely from multiple limbs. Um, that cat was insane. Like he just snapped for no reason. He's just sitting in front of the fireplace, and I looked at him, and said hi, and he just got up and he just like came at me. I had to pour beer on its head just to get it to back off. It is it was shredding my legs and arms and torso, and oh my god! And I had to like lock myself in a bathroom while its owner. I had to like call or shout to the owner, and he's just like, "Oh, he does this now and then. I'm really sorry." And then he went and like the, the cat almost attacked his owner too, and he's like, "Holy fuck!" Yeah, it was it was terrifying, but that's nothing compared to the time that I tried to hug an elk. Okay. Uh, what happened then? Oh, that's that's for a different story. That's a different. That's a different. No, that's story. for that's for that's now. A, that's you tried time. to hug an elk. So yeah, me and my me and my friend Ryan were in uh, Banff <laughs> in Alberta, and uh, he was he was going through a rough time. This is the very truncated version. I, I told this 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 is a long story, but uh, he was going through a rough time. So I was trying to cheer him up, and there's elk everywhere <laughs> in Banff. By the way, <laughs> so you thought you'd cheer your friend up by hugging a large wild animal? Yes. So uh, elk were everywhere, but they typically they stay like on the outskirts ish of the city but there are enough in the city that you can see them but the, the yeah also people- they're famous for being emotionally distant uh, distant <laughs> and not enjoying physical contact too <laughs> anyway we're we just went to some mines some sulfur mines which were stinky and we're coming back and in the parking lot there's this little rise on a hill by some a little woods clearing and there's they're not that far away the two elk just grazing and ryan's like that elk needs a hug i'm like that's a great idea and i start marching towards it up the hill and ryan's laughing he's like oh, okay that's enough it's like no it needs a hug it needs a hug it's like no jesse really come on we're not supposed to hug the elf elk come back like, no it needs a hug and i come up on top of the landing and i stretch my arms wide open and i start like heading towards the elk and the elk looks at me he stops eating they both look at me and this is uh the buck and it just it puts its head down with its antlers and it charges at me and i am just instant terrified i'm like oh my god like fight or flight just kicks in and i turn around and bolt like a bat out of hell down the embankment. And I'm like, I'm running so fast that my, my legs are moving so quickly that the ground can't keep up with it sort of thing. If that makes sense. And, and I get to the parking (laughs) lot. You run so fast, you start traveling back in time. Yes, exactly. And I get to the parking lot and this thought goes through my head. It's like, I can't outrun a fucking elk. So I'm going to have to fight it. (laughs) I can't, I can't keep running. It'll win. It'll, it'll catch me. So I have to turn around and punch it in the face. So as I reach the parking lot and this, this like terrified heart beating a mile, mile a minute. Uh, and, and I have this thought like, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to punch an elk in the face. I, I spin around on my heels and I put up my dukes and the elk hadn't moved. Apparently what it did was it put its head down and then trotted forward like three steps, like thump, 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 to sort of like fake. But that was enough to convince me that it was full on charging me all the way down the hill. And so it didn't actually, I didn't, I didn't end up punching an elk in the face, but I did go have, I did go have an elk burger immediately afterwards uh, to get revenge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But did, did, did it make your friend happy? Very happy I, I gotta, actually. Yes. I got I gotta be honest. Um, if I feel down and you say, I know what you need, let's go to a sulfur mine. Um, <laughs> you might not be the person I call for help. <laughs> but um, I'd happily watch you battle wild animals. <laughs> also, I do like the fact you had to have an elk burger just to remind yourself that humans are superior to uh, quadrupeds. Exactly. Uh, yeah. let, me do, let me do another intro for the show now. Hold on, real quick. Welcome to Canadian Politics is Boring. Today's episode is about wild Canadian geese attacking BMWs, Jesse hugging an elk, and rampant racism throughout Canada. Thanks for listening. Well, I enjoyed the elk story, um, and I wish that, um, I wish that that was, I guess this was probably back in the 1940s, you didn't have phones to film it on. (laughs) I am very old. That's true. very old. Jesse's very, very old. Jesse's so old that um, a lot of the stuff we talk about historically, um, he was there. <laughs> so, he just forgot. Because I'm Party so old. too yeah. hard. Party too, he just forgot yeah. it all. <laughs> He's snorting too much sugar. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, we all know that you know Pablo Escobar was smuggling a lot of sugar into into the United States. <laughs> Pixie dust, just, he called it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> it's delicious. This has been a fun episode. It's been something. Some it's been it's something. Been, yeah. This has been this has been an episode. It has <laughs> been an episode. Yes, I, I think we can all agree. It's it has been, been an, an episode. episode. Thank you so um, much for. If, oh, you say yeah. it. I want you to say it. Say it. Say it. Um, thank you so much for sticking us in your ear holes. Oh yay! I got him to say it. Ah, slowly we're wiggling the tip of the earbuds. Earbuds, earbuds, and gear holes. That's weird. <laughs> That's a weird <laughs> way to say ear. Say it. Is that how you say? Is that a Welshman say year? Earbuds. This is it's, 2020. It's What's that called? State of mind. <laughs> a, <laughs> Fuck. A, it's a, a year. <laughs> A year, and what's the what's the thing on the side of my head that I hear a from? A year, they're both the exact same word. Is yeah. what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's that. Yeah. Okay. Why yep. wouldn't they be? Right. That's, that's, <laughs> I that's, that's don't where, know. It, where it comes from. 